Yeah, Shalom. Uh, we back to how to build unity in a team. Uh, and there are 36 sessions in this series. We are at session 25, Accountability in a Team. Um, the scripture reading is taken from Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Carry one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we commit this session into your hand. May you continue to strengthen us so that our mind, our heart is totally aligned with you. Father, give us the spirit of revelation and wisdom so that we might truly understand how to build a united team in Christ so that Father we can enter this positive tipping point of as we uh, using all the individual gifts that you have given to us to achieve uh, the work that you have entrusted to us in Jesus name we pray Amen. <clears throat> Five dysfunction of a team, a fly, the acronym AFLAI. Uh, we have been spending a lot of time on L, lack of commitment. I'm glad that today we uh, can move on to A, avoidance of responsibility as we look into this topic of accountability and responsibility. So the fourth this dysfunction, a fly, you know that a is avoidance of responsibility. Patrick Luciani, he was a, uh, he was uh, quite a famous guy in the states, uh, in the corporate world, and in his book he mentioned uh, in his book called Why Organization Health Trumps everything else in business. In other words, this book's title is trying to say why organizational health is so critical. And there is, I want to quote what he said in one of the, uh, one of the sentences. He said, conflict is about issues and ideas, while accountability is about performance and behavior. Short phrase, but a lot of deep thoughts that we can ponder on. Maybe I repeat that phrase again. Conflict is about issues and ideas, while accountability is about performance and behavior. So the performance and behavior of a team members are determined by the levels of the commitment to serve one another to achieve the common goal. So as we look into this accountability framework, I put it in a triangle that accountability in teams, we always hit by one of the um, downfall because of the four men. And the sinful old Adamic nature of man is always like to pass the buck. So it's a human nature like to avoid responsibility. You can measure someone's spirit maturity level is when they've done something wrong, they're always an excuse. They always pass it to something else. They always say, you never tell us or who, who someone's fault. They never own responsibility. And that's why I call that is spiritual immaturity. But we all need to grow in a team. In a team, accountability, and we had to look into the biblical context. The biblical uh, context tells us that um, after the fall of man, when God come and walk in the garden in the cool of the, uh, of the day, and the man, uh, Adam and Eve, was hidden behind the bush, and 
God asked them, ask Adam first, of course, because Adam is the head of the house. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? That means the Lord is pointing the question, have you not obeyed the command that you're not supposed to eat that tree of knowledge in the middle of the garden? The man did not earn out to the own out to the problem. He passed it on to the woman. He said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit. I'm from the tree I ate it. So she, he forgot who he is. Adam forgot. He is the head of the woman. He supposed he is the one who received this commandment from the Lord. He should be teaching his wife, Eve. But instead, he allowed his wife to influence him and gave him the fruit and he sinned together with her. So, you see the, the scriptures in Romans say, one, the sin entered the world through one man. Through man and it is Adam. Adam. That means Adam. The Adam, you see, God holds Adam accountable. He's the head. He was first created. But unfortunately, he passed the blood. Then obviously the Lord turned to the woman and said, What is this you have done? The woman again, he passed on to the, the bat to the serpent. They said, The serpent deceived me. He gave an excuse. In other words, he's trying to say, God, why don't you, why you create a devil? You know why you created the serpent? If serpent is not there, I wouldn't have done what I've done. So he passed on the bat. You see, James said, We sin is our desire our wrong desire we don't always we, we like to pass the butt to the devil sometimes it's not the devil's fault it's our own flesh so we need to know when we are created in his image we have the responsibility to have dominion over the earth to give him all the glory so post neil as an apostle he said I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust that committed to me. So, either way, as a child of God, the responsibility, the role has already given to us. And we got to understand where that problem come from. That problem come from Adamic nature of passing the butt. So team member must function effectively in the individual roles and be accountable to each other to achieve the team goals. For a team to achieve a goal, its goal, everyone must function effectively according to his or her role and be accountable to one another. It is dangerous for any organization to rely merely on very gifted individuals because the supplies is always scarce and unreliable. So we need, not, not all of us going to get five talent. You know, some of us might get one talent, some might get two, but it's all the grace of God. God knew He's going to give us one talent, His sovereignty. So we do not think of ourselves more highly than we ought, but rather think of ourselves with sober judgment. In accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of us. For days, for just as each of us has one body with many members, but these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, though there are many, but form one body, and by each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If our gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is about to encourage, then take encouragement, give encouragement. It is giving, then give generously. 
This is to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So we all have individual roles and responsibility in these different parts of Christ's body. So organization must develop clear accountability guidelines, roles, and rewards policies. Evaluation criteria, that is performance criteria, standards are developed by analyzing work products and identifying specific characteristics that contribute to the overall goal. There are criteria which work is judged. So role and responsibility help us to put members in the right place. So improve collaboration between members and teams within the organizations. Then we'll be able to build capable, efficient, and effective team. The main purpose of the, the words recognition policy in an organization is to attract and retain the best talents. To attract and retain employees, it is important to recognize their efforts and make in terms of their performance, attitude, and achievement. That's why we need to commit our ways to the Lord and trust Him. He will do this. God is faithful. And He will make our righteous reward shine like the dawn. Our vindication will be like a midday sun. In Proverbs, the wisdom, I think one of the verse we learn from CE is Proverbs 27 verse 23, talking about our, we must know the conditions of our team. You know, you be sure to know the condition of your flock. Give careful attention to your herbs. That means you cannot manage by not being around. I call MBA, Master of Business Administration, as management by being around. If you lost touch with your team members, if you don't know what's happening, you are never to be a good steward. And we can need to know whether God's going to give someone one talent, two talent, five talents. God is always fair. He knows what's the best for each person. And he's just, his fairness is, called, is very dynamic. He said, the one who does not know does things deserving punishment were beaten with few flow blows. But everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded from him. But from the, those who has been entrusted with much, much will be asked. God is fair. He give you five talents, he need, he will demand five talents. He give you one talent, he will demand one talent. So don't envy those who have five talents. Say, God, why are you giving five talents? Not give me, only give me one. I tell you, the one who has five talents had to work a lot harder than you because his requirement is to make double four of the talent that the Lord has given to him. So we got to remember, leaders' responsibility is to the 3D, discover, develop, and deploy the precious resources of the team members. By constantly discovering, developing the abilities of the team members, then we can deploy them at the right position. That means we are turning ordinary people into extraordinary team members. It's the real taste of the leader. A leader is not there to oppress the members, but is to encourage them by discovering, developing, and deploy the gifts. The role of the leader is to place members in the different positions according to the calling. You don't ask the monkey go and swim or a duck to climb a tree. The purpose of the organization is to enable ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary and great things for God. Same thing for kingdom leadership. As shepherds of God's flock, 
we are called to watch over our flock, not because we must, but because we are willing. As God wants us to be not pursuing this honest gain, but eager to serve, not lording over the people God has entrusted over to us, but we are to exemplify, we are to be examples to them. So Peter said in First Peter chapter 4, he said, each of you should use whatever gifts you have to receive to serve others. That is the reason why God gives you gifts. So that faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If one speaks, he should do as the one who speaks the very word of God. If one serves, he should do so with the strength God provides. So that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. So let us, like what uh, Paul said to the Corinthians, let light shine our darkness. Let light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory display in the face of Christ. So even right now, darkness over the earth, thick darkness is over the people. Let us rise and shine. Let us take ownership of who we are. Team excellence depends on the honest view and the feedbacks received by the leaders. Everyone, especially leaders, need to be accountable to others for excellence. Within our organization, we encourage and implement a 360 degree assessment system, whereby leaders hear honest feedback from those who they lead. In Chinese, we call yi yan tang. It's a foolish for those leaders. They just command people what to do without working in teamwork. They are foolishness because they don't listen to counsel. Many organizations fail because of stubborn leaders who act arrogantly. And even if they go the wrong way, no one actually speak to them. So they'll let them him fall. So that means that our text today in our scripture is that to bear each other burdens means if anyone is found in sin, there are members of the team who are spiritual should restore him with meekness. That's why teamwork is about listening to the counsel, counsel of your team members. Proverbs give us many wisdom concerning this. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15, it says, The way of the fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Proverbs 19, 20, Listen to the advice and accept discipline, and at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Proverbs 15, 21, 22, Folly bring joy to the one who has no sense, but whoever understands keep a straight course. Remember, planes fail for the lack of counsel, but with many counsellors, we succeed. That's why implementation of 360 degree assessment is very important. I'll put down three very practical states. First, clear, effective questionnaires. Two, integrate four stages in this process. And thirdly, we need to establish a just, transparent, leadership. 360 degree performance review policies are complex sometimes and difficult to implement. That's why a lot of organizations don't implement because they think it's too difficult. They put it in too hard basket. Then one might ask why organizations should invest in a 360 degree performance review system. But it's important. We know in the long term, the team and building a strong leadership skill, this 360 degree performance evaluation methodology actually provides a holistic approach to team performance. It includes very important factors such as collaborations, teamwork, and leadership. Based on the development plan of the 360 degree 
performance evaluation system, it can effectively improve the overall performance of the team and the productivity of the organizations. To perform a 360 assessment, we follow different steps. The clarity and effectiveness of the system is very important to the organizations. The performance evaluation system is uh, an advanced evaluation method that is used by many organizations to assess the performance of the team, which judge the performance of the team members through evaluation to about, say, in a team, seven to 12 people. And these people work with team members. They share the work, same work environment so that they gather the feedback from in the, in the form of the feedback based on the team members' abilities. Then the team members themselves will participate in the assessment of uh, how to improve to understand our team members' strength and weakness through the help of the creative feedback form. So good questionnaires are very, very important. And feedback is collected using employee performance-based job survey, um, which is, in I said, in the, we must integrate the four stages. First stage is the self-assessment of the team member himself. And then the higher level assessment, then the lower level assessment. That's why it's got 360, you know, higher and lower. And um, so it's, it's a, it's a uh, and then finally a peer level assessment. So there are four stages. You have self-assessment, uh, assess the level below you and up you, and also to have peers among the peers. So that's why we call the four stages uh, assessment. So four duration, self, uh, with people above you, below you, and then your peers. So there are four stages. We need to integrate these four stages together to achieve a very effective uh, 360 uh, degree performance review. And we know it works because it's where we collect feedbacks from all members and to ensure fairness and equality in organizations. And in this way, we always will create a transparent and a trustworthy organization culture. That means people are there to speak out. They know when they speak out, they don't get penalized because when they contribute, they be able to help the team to pursue excellence. And this is the way that we should be shaping the image of the kingdom uh, leadership. A comprehensive assessment include also important one is the character that can promote teamwork. So as a team, you know, what I like, like park light. When Paul talked to the Corinthian, he said, do not be misled. Bad companies corrupt good character. So in a good team, you are in a good company. People who can speak truth to your life. People can speak the truth with love. And then we can pursue excellence. And we've got to be careful in our lives. In a team, why a team can pursue excellence because we are sowing to each other's life. The leaders are sowing the good seeds in the lives of the team members. And good companies build character. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 warn us, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reap what he sows. So in a team, we sow good seeds. The team will go into a positive tipping point. Accountability is about love and care for the health and the welfare of the team. Everyone, especially leaders, need to be accountable to one another in the pursuit of excellence. You know, we hope in our GJ we encourage and implement 360 degree review system whereby leaders can hear honest feedback so they can continue to pursue excellence. They know the team member is speaking to them the truth with love. So, many organizations fell due to hard-headed leaders who acted arrogantly and no one could speak into their lives. And we don't want to be an organization like that. And they are on the wrong paths. We need to learn from the scriptures. We are carrying one another's burdens, means if a person is caught up in the scenes, you know, we who are spiritual must restore such person in the spirit of gentleness. And that is Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. And that's Paul, uh, you know, in, in uh, 
giving us the advice. So we should never see someone is falling and not speaking the truth in his life. And because we know, uh, Paul taught us as well, give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe the government tax, pay your tax. Revenue, revenue. But our leaders, respect them because if honour, you owe honour, then give honour. Let's no debt remain outstanding. We only owe two debts, the, go- the debt of our gospel and the debt to love one another. So we are commanded to love one another. Love does no harm to a neighbor. And love is the fulfillment of the law. So through carrying each other burdens so that none of the team members is disadvantaged. You see, the whole, the whole paragraph, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 to 5, you see the corporately and the individuals. So corporately, we are supposed to be uh, carrying each other's burdens. And in this way, we fulfill the law of Christ. And then, Individually, he said, if anyone thinks they are something where they are not, they deceive themselves. So you need to know your identity. You need to know the gift that the Lord has called you. And he wants to taste, taste our own actions. Then we can take pride in ourselves alone without comparing ourselves uh, with someone else. So we have to carry our own load, our individual responsibility in a team corporate environment. So uh, when we do this, none of the team members will be disadvantaged. So internal organizational health that fosters unity and commitment among team members is an important advantage or differentiation. We need organizational health, not just good physical functioning, but good spiritual health as well. That's why we must let love be the culture of our leadership. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, but cling on to what is good. Hate what is evil, that means you dare to speak up when there is something wrong. Devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above ourselves. Never lacking in zeal, always for zeal. When someone fire put off, encourage them. Because we need to keep our spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. As leaders, we must be at the center, but we touch the fringe as well. Don't you? A leader will never rise out of the position that may never be able to get in touch with the people at the fringe. Do not be considered. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but be careful to do what is right in the eyes of the team. It is possible. As far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. I know in a team, it's not always easy. But the Bible says, we do not overcome evil by evil, but we overcome evil with good. Let's come to the Lord in prayer and let us build an accountability framework that is aligned with the Lord's will. Father, we Thank you that you have created us in your image, in true righteousness and holiness. Let us understand our call and take positions because we know the battle belongs to you. One of the most important things in winning a battle is take position. Let us take positions by knowing our calling and be at the right place at the right time. Bless our GJ family. Bless our people, so that they can serve you with the capacity that you have given to them. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.